So I'm just going to go through uh, each of these legs and start filling them in using some simple wood filler. When I run the wire wheel over this, um, some of this will get re-exposed, uh, but at least it'll have some uh, filler deep into the cracks. All right, so there's our legs uh, filled. <clears throat> we'll give that a chance to set. Now, some of you may be noticing these wood, these legs. Uh, a lot of them have some significant cracks, and you know it's pretty crappy looking wood. And well, yeah, you're right. Uh, it is. It is kind of crappy looking wood, especially when you think I could get uh, top grade number one select oak or maple uh, from a lumber supplier. But what's the thrill in that? For me, the whole point of this is is using reclaimed wood, which has some quirks and knots and cracks and holes. It's it's kind of the point of of what I do here is to reuse a material that would otherwise be cast off. This table is, or the legs for this table are, uh, the legs are gonna be used to support a table that holds a set of keys and a picture frame. So we're not looking to support a 400 pound load. <clears throat> we're just looking to provide something that has a good shape, which is fundamentally all these legs will need to do is hold their shape uh, to support the tabletop. So again, the, kind of the whole point of this is to reuse stuff that is going to be otherwise cast off. But for those of you who appreciate kind of reusing what you can find, thanks for watching. Next bit will be to put taper, well, of course, we'll sand and dress these legs a little bit. They're going to cut the, um, cut the legs, so they're not going to be standing vertical. They're going to be tilted about 10 degrees, so we'll cut off the bottom and cut off the top uh, and then we'll build a little piece that will uh, enable us to mount them to the tabletop itself. So now the filler on the legs has had a chance to set. I'm just going to give it a rough sand to get rid of any, uh, just kind of <clears throat> get it down to the wood. cut the uh, tapers on the legs. So to cut the taper on the leg, I want to make sure I have the legs oriented in the right way. Now you remember when we cut this taper <coughs> on this slightly thinner edge here, it's a little bit thinner this way than it is this way, the taper cut didn't start until about this point in the leg coming down. And it's really quite visible there's a flat spot here that becomes really apparent when I put the two legs together like that. I clamped in nice and tight here up against each other or butted up nice and tight against each other but at this end you can see there is there's a gap that's the taper that we have on the legs as they come out. Uh, this side is a straight edge but this has the taper. So that represents these edges here then represent the inside of the leg and I will want to make sure that <clears throat> the legs are oriented so that this would be, for example, a left leg, that's the right leg. And <clears throat> as I stand them up, I want to make sure that when I cut them off, for example, if these are going to go on one end, I will want to have the taper or our, our bevel on this cut this way. So I will mark the outside edge of each leg, indicating which direction I want to taper. Because there's nothing worse when you get to the 
saw and you're ready to cut it off and you think, oh shoot, have I got this upside down or downside right or, you know, you get it always mixed up. So I like to mark the tapers like that, then I know for sure where I'm going to be cutting. So I got the legs all cut off at uh, a 10 degree angle. <clears throat> the next bit <clears throat> will be cutting this end at the same 10 degree angle and keeping the legs <clears throat> in exactly the same orientation. The tricky bit here is that, as you recall, I, these legs have a taper. So they're tapered here, meaning this edge and this edge are the flat edges. So I want to make sure for cutting this leg, as an example, I keep the fence on the flat side, <clears throat> or sorry, keep the miter on the flat side. And then for cutting this one, <clears throat> because this is the flat edge, I want to keep the miter on that side. So I'm going to set up a, a block at the end of the table saw here uh, to give me exactly the length that I want. The leg will butt up against that back here so I can get it set to the right place and then I can run it through the saw. All right, I've got my stop block set up here so I can bump the leg up against that block, grab it tight here and move it through. So I'm going to make uh, this cut, I'll switch the miter around to do the next leg, switch it back, and so on, just because I have the legs lined up in order here. Away we go. Okay, there's our legs, uh, mitered in both, both directions, so they can sit at an angle like that, 10 degrees. So mitered and tapered, now we're ready to do a little bit of finishing on them. Um, but before, actually before I do that, I'm going to um, make the little block that these will attach to. Yeah, in fact, there's a, a little bit of work to do. So the concept that we run on the bottom of the table is a little block of wood like this. Of course, it's going to be cut to the appropriate size. <clears throat> and then the leg, in fact, the size will be um, the width of the leg here. <clears throat> so what I'll be doing is cutting a notch out of the leg the thickness of this piece, like that's how deep it'll be, and coming in, uh, so I have seven eighths of an inch exposed here. That will let this leg sit, you know, kind of in there, and then I can put a screw from the underside of this um, this piece into the leg to hold it tight. Uh, so with glue and that screw, that'll hold everything uh, nice and snug in place. And if I'm cutting precisely, then it matches up perfectly flush. That's <coughs> that edge and this edge are perfectly flush. Uh, so it makes for a pretty nice and a relatively strong joint. I've done this on a few tables in the past and uh, I've been pleased with the results of that. So a little bit of work to do on the notching and that re involves 
uh, another jig. So laying out the legs and how they sit on the table, they are roughly going to be like that. Uh, so you can see they have a little bit of an overhang on this uh, cross member. Uh, they'll come in uh, seven eighths of an inch. So I want the outside edge of the leg to be one inch off the edge of the table, so on both sides, and then seven eighths of an inch beyond. So I've got one inch from here to here. Then I want to come in seven eighths of an inch, and that's where that cross member piece will start. So it'll go there. And if I do the same on the other side, I measured and I found up I have a piece that's got to be exactly eight inches long. So I'm going to cut this off at eight inches, and then I'm going to trim them uh, on bevels to get exactly the right um, shape. But you may notice that this piece has a little bit of a curve to it, um, and I thought, you know, I'd like to keep that. So what I've done, or what I will do, is once I get this cut to the right length, I'm going to set it back on here and then use my pencil just to kind of mark where I want to have that cut, go over to the bandsaw and just cut that little bit of a relief so that it will fit perfectly over that curved edge. An interesting look to the table. Anyway, let me cut these to length first. The nice thing about these cuts is that it doesn't have to be exactly eight inches. If I'm off a 32nd of an inch, eh, it's okay. So <clears throat> I have the piece now that'll fit exactly eight inches in here. And what I want to do, I'd mark that side, I'm gonna, before I had it at length. So I have it sitting right between my two marks where that's going to sit on the table. Now I'm going to use my pencil and just kind of mark the relief line that I want. And there's the line. Uh, not much of a relief, but just, just enough that it'll make it sit properly. So I'll mark the other piece and then we'll take it over to the bandsaw and cut that out. There's our first uh, cut. Did manage to get a little curve on it. I'm going to get some sandpaper, just take off the very edges of it and a little rough spot in the middle. And that should sit down pretty nicely on the table. Much better than just a flat fit, so I'm, I'm okay. All right, we'll start with the second piece. Again, it came out of the wood a little bit early, but uh, still we got this nice uh, curve to it. So I'll get some sandpaper on this, clean it up, then we'll see how it looks back on the table. 
So just to kind of give you a before and after point of view, the gap on this side, we have a gap on that side, but by cutting that angle out of it, or that little curve out of it, we get a real nice fit all the way across. So that'll sit on the table like that. Now the next <coughs> piece to cut will be these guys, but I need to cut a 10 degree angle on this side and a slightly more than 10 degree angle on that side, the width of the table leg. So I'm gonna start by cutting the 10 degree angle and we'll cut the bulk of the material off this side for the slightly more than 10 degree angle. Uh, but I'll do that when I have a leg set in place. Right, we're set up for our first 10 degree cut. Okay, now we're going to figure out the other angle and exactly the width that we want for these cuts. So I'm using my angle finder, well, I shouldn't say angle finder, an angle setter. I'm sure there's another term for this tool. I don't know what it is though. So with the legs set flat on the tabletop, that will be the angle that I want. That'll be the angle that I want to have on this piece. So it's going to be slightly more than 10 degrees. Not much, but slightly. That'll do. And we're about 12 and a half degrees on that. And I marked where that cut is gonna be. So I'm gonna set my fence. Now, <clears throat> the legs will be slightly different. These, the legs at one end are, are, just by the way they were cut, are slightly, slightly, slightly uh, thicker than the legs at this end. Uh, so, <clears throat> I'll have to make some compensation for that, but not a lot. And it'll all come out in the wash, I think, anyway. So, I'm going to set the fence up to let me cut off that much. Okay. Our other side cut. These legs will go here nicely. That piece fits in perfectly. Good, I'll do the other end. And then we'll make the notches in the legs. That's the amount I want to cut off. On the flat.
we go. Terrific. I uh, noticed that on this piece, there was quite a bit of scrappy stuff on that material, but I wanted to use it anyway. Making the cut, all that came off, so I have a nice clean piece here. This is why I find working with this material that people would throw away, you know, you just cut a little bit off and you wind up with some gorgeous stuff. All right, next step we'll be cutting the notches for the legs. I want the legs to sit like so. Uh, so I've got to cut a notch out of here. So I'll set up my jig for that. So for this jig, it's gonna take two cuts. <clears throat> the first cut is going to be making a cut here. I, like I wanna take out this section of the leg, that little corner. In order to take out that section, I'm going to make a cut here and then I'm going to flip the piece over and make a cut this way to knock that little block out. Of course that's going to have to be done on an angle and I'm going to have to be supporting, uh, you can see that the table, the leg doesn't want to sit flush so keeping the piece that I cut off from here comes in handy because now I can just prop it underneath there and make that cut. I need to make the depth of the cut exactly this height. So I have set the blade to match the top of this piece. And uh, then I want to be exactly 7 eighths of an inch from this face, this face here, to the outside of the blade. Though I say seven eighths, eh, it doesn't have to be rocket science, but I do like to be—I like to be accurate with that. Again, the trick in making sure that I get these legs put in the correct orientation. This is the flat side. I know this is the flat side. If I put it in the wrong way, I wind up with uh, a gap here, and by clamping this in, I'm going to twist it a little bit, and then the legs will be skewed. So I need to make sure when I put it in. I put it in like so. I also like to use little, I have these little flat blocks that I slip in here just so that as I clamp this down I'm not going to be marring the surface of the wood. So I just make sure that it is sitting flush on the table, clamp these down, and I'm ready to make a through cut. And I just realized I made a mistake. I should have been seven eighths of an inch to the inside of the blade, not the outside of the blade. But like I say, not rocket science, and I can live with an extra eighth of an inch uh, inset from the edge of the table. So I'll just continue, at least I'll make everything the same. So I'll go through all four legs, and then we'll flip over and, and cut the block out. I have set the miter gauge to 10 degrees, so that lets me uh, tilt the yank, tilt the leg in such a way that this cut coming through here is going to cut off exactly uh, the right angle. This is the straight edge of the leg. No, I take that back. It's not the straight edge of the leg. I need to be cutting them through this way. That's why it's important to double check everything, right? The other thing that I did is I marked the X on the... I don't know if you can see that. There we are. I put an X on the portion that I want to cut out. If I cut out the other side, that would just, just you know, ruin the whole leg. I have to do another one. So, <clears throat> got that set the way I want. 
I want to make sure that I'm putting the miter on the 10 degree angle, not the 12 and a half degree angle. And I have a, a wedge that was cut off when we cut the taper. I saved that. So I can prop that underneath the leg here. And now what I need to cut I got everything square. So I'll just get the table saw set up where I want it. I'm gonna put a line down here just so that I am absolutely sure of where I'm cutting. So I put a little mark on there and I wanna be on this side of the line. Could be a little bit closer so the um, there's a little bit of a gap here which matches the gap here so I want to do that cut again I'll come over just a little bit closer on this side I want to be over just a little bit closer fine adjustment to be made but uh, overall I'm, I'm pleased with that so I'll do the other cuts and then we can uh, start assembling the leg There's all the legs cut. We'll now move on to uh, some assembly. That's basically how they're going to sit. Like that. So we're ready to attach uh, or construct the leg assemblies. So here's the piece that we uh, cut and took a little gouge out of it sits in here like this they're going to be connected uh, to the legs with these screws here now these screws I've seen them sold uh, two different ways one by Craig as pocket hole screws and for about two-thirds of that price you can pick them up as particle board screws so same screw uh, but the thing I like about it is it's got a nice flat shoulder so when I put it in here in this orientation coming through this and into this I'll use a, a Forstner bit 10 millimeter Forstner bit to give a nice broad shoulder on which this the shoulder of the screw uh, can sit on and then I'll drill another, the hole deeper obviously a pilot hole into the leg to hold that now because this is a very hard wood I'm going to be drilling a fairly uh, a larger pilot hole than normal uh, when I go into pine or something like that, I can drill a relatively small hole because the wood is very forgiving. Uh, this stuff being hard, I don't want to split it. So we'll use a, a, a three-step operation for this. The first step will be a Forstner bit um, coming in a little bit to drill that shoulder. Then a small pilot hole uh, to go the full depth of the cut of, of the screw. And then a another hole, uh, the width of the shank of the screw, just so that we don't have any binding in here. I want all of the pressure to be exerted in the leg itself, uh, not up here. 
So once the, those holes are drilled, uh, put the screw in, of course, and apply glue all over this joint just to make sure it's a nice, it's held fast with glue and the screw. Brought you down a little closer, you can get a better look at what I'm doing. I like to go into the wood, the depth of the uh, Forstner bit head. That way I know that I have, uh, I'm not gonna have any clearance issues. That's the first hole done. I'll switch to a bit that'll go uh, deep into the wood for the screw itself. So let me select a bit. So I put a 764th inch bit uh, that'll be the pilot hole for the uh, depth of the screw. Now I'm just going to switch to a 1 8 bit that'll just cover this portion of the uh, of this piece. I, I don't want to have any binding on here. All right, let's see how that goes in. I'm going to take this apart again to put glue in there, but I just want to get the screw seated. Lovely. Okay, I like that. And just to kind of give you an illustration now of how that sets up. That's good. One leg assembly assembled.